It is God who draws us here. A yearning to praise. That which is bigger than us. A desire to give thanks. For the bountiful gifts of life. It is God who draws us here. For comforts in a bruising world. To challenge our half-hearted efforts. It is God who draws us here. To sing and pray to experience the risen Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in the font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise, through Jesus Christ our Amen. Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Acts. But filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened 
and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. A reading from 1 Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. 
Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father will be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, O Christ. O Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. There are times when life goes smoothly and there's times when lives get kind of bumpy. And I think globally we're in a time that is bumpy and within those bumpy times we have times that are really bumpy personally and then we have times that are that are smoother. Um, in our gospel reading today Jesus says do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And Jesus says that he has gone to prepare a place for us. He is preparing a place for us. In the midst of this pandemic, he is preparing the future for us. We don't have it all figured out, and we have disagreements over about it. And sometimes the disagreements, um, we lose our way in the disagreements. When the disciples asked, how do we know the way to the Father. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I think going, going on, when we um, ask about how are we going to proceed in these next days, um, we need to think about who is the way, the truth, and the life in our lives. And then listen to God in prayer and pray together as a community and share together as a community. There's not just one person who has all the wisdom. Um, we, none of us have been through a pandemic of this kind before. No one alive has the memory of navigating, leading other people through this. So we're all learning. And just think about what it was like when we were newborn babies and all the things that we had to learn. I've been meeting with the um, Rasta leaders and the bishop. He has every, when, every Thursday, he has a gathering for us and he's um, been giving guidance. Pray for our bishop and give thanks for our bishop, Bill Gold. He is an amazing um, person doing a fabulous job. And I've spoken with some of the other colleagues who say that he has brought a lot of comfort for them. He is a very um, stable, wise, loving voice right now. And he's urging all of us to not jump to conclusions, to not um, jump to places that we aren't. Um, we don't know how long this is going to go, so we can, we can demoralize people by giving predictions that um, might not come true. And we can also demoralize, we can also, uh, you know, present false hope by saying, okay, tomorrow we're going to be out in the streets. So he's been saying, you know, let's stick to what we know and we'll listen to what guidance we receive, and we'll follow that. He's been listening carefully to the um, governors, to the health leaders. He has constant conversations with the people of our um, area. And so then he's going to be putting together a team after the governor has his teams tell us about how we are going to proceed in the next weeks and months. Then the bishop will do the same. He'll gather that information together with a team from the Senate. And they will put together recommendations of how we proceed. And then we as our congregation, our council needs to come together and take what we receive from the government and from our bishop and talk about how do we put that into place for our specific congregation. And one of the things that I think the way the truth in the life tells us is, is that patience is a virtue. It's a gift um, of the Spirit of God. Be anxious for nothing but in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. 
peace is a gift from God and we raise up our concerns, we give thanks to God, and then we let go of that anxiety because it's in God's hands. You know, it's much easier for me to wait and be patient and take wise steps um, when I'm surrounded every week by the bishop and clergy and, and other people throughout our area who are also doing the same thing. It's very difficult for, it would be very, very difficult for me if the bishop and all the congregations were saying, well, we're going we're gonna to have huge mass services this week, and, and if I'm the only one who's, you know, trying to um, work with the congregation to not do that, the pressure would be intense. My job is made much easier um, in working with the council and with you and with the bishop because I have so many voices around me that are caring and loving and that are patient and that are seeking the guidance of um, our health experts and others. It, it's easier because of the voice of the community. It's easier for me because I've listened to people like Ron in our emergency room who says, pray that the people will remain um, apart and will honor and respect the protections that need to be in place. She works in the emergency room. She sees all the people coming in. And so I have these voices that make it much easier for me to be patient. If I were alone in that and I had a whole sea of voices that were wanting to just go in all different directions at once, um, it would be harder to hold the course and yet we would still need to be called to do that. Because of that, I think that our calling as a congregation is to model what is wise and loving and good and to, to model that so that the others in the community find it easier to go on that journey too because they aren't going alone, they're going with us. Um, and if we band together with others, others in the faith community and others in our health community um, to take steps which are informed by those who are around us. We share wisdom. It is not an easy time. Um, and we are in a new world. The bishop keeps using the phrase that um, we're in a new normal. We're not going back to the old normal anytime soon, if ever. The world is, a, is changed. It's a different place. And so I wanted to just reflect on, on that a little bit with you and to talk about, um, even though there's difficulty with that, to think together about how do we cope with that and can we come to appreciate and embrace some of the new world that we've come to? I was in a conversation with a colleague this week who was just crying out saying, you know, I've had so much pain around me and I'm feeling angry about this angry work you know god why are you working with this why are you allowing this you know and i i feel that within me and i've heard it within others too is is how can god be allowing this to take place in my belief um having lived closely with nature and with the earth that breathes and in, in the jungles amazon my belief is that the earth is also one of God's children. The trees are God's children, that we, God has more children than just human beings. And that the earth has been crying out and praising, praying to God, asking God um, for salvation because we've been destroying the earth. You know, it was one week ago this last week that I moved here. One week ago this last week that um, many from this congregation carried my boxes and, and, and helped us move. They went to... Delaware to pack us up and bring us here. This week has been incredible. Uh, this year has been one of incredible blessings for me, and I am so thankful to God to, to bring me. I'm so glad I'm here where I am at this time because I have been nurtured by you. But a week ago, uh, one year ago, one year and one week ago, um, I was traveling through the Amazon area where I was a child, and that Amazon rainforest is gone. And there's a lot that's been destroyed with that. And, and I, I, I don't find words to tell you the sorrow that that has. So I hear my brother and sister Earth crying out to God. Have you ever thought about how God answers prayer when we pray for sunshine and someone else is praying for rain for their crops? How does God choose between those two things? And I think that the prayers that have been rising up from the earth, um, God's child, the earth, has been praying and, and God has answered the prayers of people and has allowed us to destroy the earth. And maybe now is the time that God is hearing the prayers of the earth. 
because the earth is resting, the airs are becoming clear. I saw pictures taken from someone's home in India where for the first time in the city, for the first time in 40, 50 years, they've seen that they have a whole horizon full of snow-capped Himalayan mountains that they never knew that they could see from their house. For the first time in their lifetime, the air is clear enough for them to see what was on the horizon. And the waters are being cleansed and our um, values are being changed. We're reflecting on what's important. So I think maybe God is listening to prayers of more than just human beings in this. And how do you answer the prayers of all? It will take the power of one who raises the dead to do that. So thinking about how we have faced births before, I want to share with you a couple of um, images. And if you would um, be so gracious as, in, as to see what I've been looking at. Uh, I think one of the ways that we cope is to share the, uh, share the, what we're seeing every day. And Deb has been sharing these images. This is in the yard in front of her house. These little birds snuggled up together. There's one voice. There's three voices raised up. These little birds that are uh, new birds and she's been watching the life grow every day. So one of the ways that we cope is by sharing these joys. She's been sharing these images with us and we've seen life happening in her yard. We all get to see this on Zoom. Little babies. I wanted to share with you, um, this is a family portrait in my family. Some years ago, my kids are in their 20s and 30s now, um, but I was thinking about how I've learned so much from my kids and what have my kids taught me about going through a pandemic? Um, sometimes we have to see things in new ways. New little birth, what does that all mean? This is our Maria with Asha. What does it mean when new life enters our house and changes us dramatically? And I think that's what's happening for us is that there's new life entering for us and through this pandemic and we have to see in different ways. Can we see the wonder and the mystery of what is new about us as well as the grief and loss Sometimes it means that we have to get messy. Um, sometimes it, thinks it means that we have to try out new things. This is my little Asha, and I was looking at these pictures and just burst out laughing when I saw them and thinking about how, you know, what's it like to put things in our mouths that we haven't felt or tasted before? And in this time, we are called to try out new things. We find things that are comforting and hold them close by. Imagination, you know, think about how my kids take things and turn them into other worlds. And we use our imaginations to create uh, new ways of connecting. It's a time to walk in other people's shoes. I've been listening to my sister describe what it's like for some of the poor places in Ecuador. Um, on the coast where the disease has spread rapidly, there are people who live in one room houses. Mm -hmm. Without electricity, without air conditioning on the beach, it's very, very hot, without um, internet. And they're told that they all have to stay in there with nine people in a room with nothing in there. And disease has spread, but we walk in other people's shoes and we pray for them, walk alongside them. Um, our kids love to dress up and we can do things in quirky ways. We're following a new, new path in life. Can we be creative in the ways we do that? This is something new. We have to help each other, help each other learn to walk in, in our world. Um, I've been learning from other people in our congregation about, you know, we, we share how to make masks. We share how to get on Zoom. We share how to have um, gatherings together as, as family members in new ways. My little Asha, She's laughing here. She's, uh, somehow she crawled under the couch and got kind of stuck under there. Can we respond to some of the predicaments we're in with laughter? Um, can we see the humor in some of the things that are about us and the strange things that we find ourselves in? Celebrating life. 
one of the challenges, one of the things that's been a heartache for me is when people um, lose loved ones at this time and are not able to gather. We had this amazing birthday party for my niece um, that I think I shared with you. And she turned 35 and my brother got videos from people all over um, from her past who live in many, many different places far apart and put all this together in a video greeting for her, a kind of movie. And then we set a Zoom birthday party where we all watched this together. And it was amazing, the sense of being together in the midst of that um, separation. Yesterday, Kathy and I met with Kathy's brother who is in Kenya and his wife and Kathy's parents in California. And we had a time together that we haven't had before. It's the first time, it's a new way of being. I just read, someone shared with me um, that there is a company that sets up funeral services similar to the way that my brother set up the birthday for my um, niece, that they will gather people's reflections and thoughts, um, music and gifts it, uh, following the death of a person. They'll put it in the video and they'll set up a, a Zoom worship service where everyone can come together and see faces and they can experience the gifts being shared. So it calls us to celebrate life still, but perhaps in new ways. Maybe dance. We put on music and dance together. This picture just makes me laugh. Um, sometimes we have just too much to carry in life. And we have to be creative in finding new ways to carry it. I don't know how many dolls she's carrying, but she's decided to just stuff them in her pants. Um, but in, in this time when we're burdened and we're caring a lot, it's a time for us to be creative, to look at new ways, to see what the gifts are around us. My kids like to do strange things. They decide they want to play inside a file cabinet that the file doors and drawers had been removed while we were working on something. This picture makes me think that being confined to small space, we all respond differently. Um, and to be aware of that, to respect the fact that some people have an easier time than other people. That sometimes we will feel like just crying out. Um, sometimes we'll feel angry. Sometimes we'll feel lost. And to recognize there's all different emotions, to be gentle with ourselves and allow space for us to have different emotions. And for us to be patient with other people. Other people who are just needing to get out. If they're done with this. I, I understand that voice. I don't think it's safe yet, but I understand that voice. And so to recognize that people are all different. It's a time when we can read again together. Um, that's something that we can do in this time. Kathy talking to her parents. Her dad said that they've gotten out old books and they're reading aloud together. That's a great way of, of um, coming together again. Our kids could take the few things around them and just turn it into a party. It didn't matter what it was. They just, and, and, and so even though we're confined in our space, if we can regain that creativity of children and turn life into a party to celebrate the funny things that there are around us. This is reading again. I think another very important part of this time pandemic is rest. Um, I found that after um, tragedies and in times of global issues like this, it, it is exhausting. And there are times when we, um, we need to just recognize that we need extra rest than we have before because we're learning so much. There's been so much happening. We can share with each other stories of what is dear to us. We have the ability on Zoom um, to do that. This is one of my favorite places on earth. And I don't know if you see my cursor here, but there is, I'm sitting at near the top of the cliff. So it gives you an idea of how big that cliff is. And this is a cliff that's overlooking the Sea of Galilee. And this is um, the sea below us. Um, and these are fishermen who are setting out to sea. But this is the water where Jesus walked, where Jesus taught, where Jesus healed people, where he told people when they were weary, casting their nets all night long, he said to cast again. 
on the other side and where their nets were filled and, and they were, you know, their, their, their boats were almost sinking because of the amount of fish that they caught after a weary night of not catching anything. In this pandemic, we come through our weary nights, difficult times. And this Sea of Galilee is an ordinary human place, a small place on this planet, just like the one where you live. And the places where we live do not disqualify us from, um, you know, we don't have to be in palaces or out in the middle of where everyone else is in order for God's miracles to happen. God's miracles can happen on a little tiny lake in a faraway place. It's a time of learning. Um, I want to send this out to all of you. It's a Word document that you can put on your um, desktop. And what we're going to do with this is that each one of these blue boxes are links for the rest of the month. So instead of people having to find their links for the worship service each time, and every time I send them out, there's a whole bunch of people who don't get them. I get messages that because of spam or other things that they have been undelivered. Other times it goes out and there's no messages. It seems like everyone's gotten them. And then I hear back from people that say, I, I didn't get a link. So we're looking at different ways of doing this. Shorty's going to be sending out links to see if it's better from her email than from mine, from uh, churches rather than from personal. And this sheet is, I wanted to show you this because... In order for this to work, you have to hold down um, the control key while you put your cursor on that box. Otherwise, if you just put your cursor on it, it's not a live link. But if you hold the control key down while you do that, then you can open it. So there will be a place for you if you want to on, um, join evening prayer, you can just use the same document for the rest of the month. So those are some things. So we're looking at how do we um, use, you know, how do we work with what we know to make things easier and more accommodating? It's an awful lot of things I've said, but um, we're in a new world and it's gonna take um, new ways of being. Um, and we have new gifts that we haven't had before. We haven't used Zoom before. So there's some things that we can do and have fun with, with, with that. I have on um, another shirt that I wanted you to see. And it's just a reminder, many of you have this shirt, God's Work, Our Hands. It's a reminder that we are called to the mission of God. We're not, we're not alone. We're not in this just for ourselves, that we are part of an earth, that we are called to, to the mission of God to spread life and hope and to help people find food and, and uh, resources in this time. We're called to live in a new way. There's uh, ways that we can have fun with Zoom. I've got... We can change the backgrounds. And I liked doing this. Um, I've shown in, in our prayer meetings, we have had the backgrounds of where I live, so you can see what I'm doing. I can also invite you to the beach. We did this the other night with the prayers. Could even put on the sound of the beach. I've done that. And we can enjoy being in different places. And with this one, it's kind of fun because I can just go off to the water and invite you all to come with me. In this, um, being able to share things in new ways, when we've gathered for prayer, Joyce has posted different places where she's traveled in the past. We've gotten to hear stories. We've gotten to see her home. We've gotten to see um, amazing sights from her. And, and we've gotten to know things about Joyce that we didn't know before. Um, Dave was showing us his oyster farm and, and how he works with that. So we got to see that. He had that as his backdrop. So we get to um, explore the world and discover things in new ways. I would never have known those things about Joyce or Dave without this time. So I think that there are many, many ways in which this time can be a blessing and not just a curse. It happens to be um, what we focus on. Have you driven down the road and have someone put something in front of your face? Um, hard to drive that way. And 
when that happens to me, when suddenly I can't see, I remember one time I was in, in St. Croix, I was driving down the freeway. We had this new um, Land Cruiser. And all of a sudden on the freeway of St. Croix, the only one they have, the um, hood blew up. So I was driving down the freeway with the hood straight in front of my face. I couldn't see the lanes. I couldn't see if there's cars in front of me. I couldn't see anything. And fortunately, I was able to get off the side of the road and stop. But I think that if we can't see where we're going, that we can end up in um, disasters. And what is it that we choose to put in front of our eyes? Do we choose to put things that are depressing, that are um, destructive, that are hurtful, or do we get caught up in the fights and the debates? I think that we, can, we need to be listening and aware in forming ourselves with those things, but what we need to have in our sight is Christ. That the way, the truth, and the life is the one that leads us, and it is His Spirit that we um, need to guide us. And if we have other things that block out Christ from our vision, we'll end up in disaster. Okay, we've taken quite a bit of time and um, gone lots of places this morning with this. But um, some reflections about this. When we come back to worship, things will still be different. I learned this week that one of the biggest risks in worship, you know what it is? It's singing. Because when we sing, that projects out the, um, the virus. If we have that, it spreads through the air. So the bishop is talking about, what do we do about singing when we come back to worship? Communion, uh, what are the different things, that, the risks with that? So there are things that I haven't even thought about, and the bishop and his team will be working with us. And, and so when we come back, there will be some things that will be different. I'm not saying that we're not going to be singing when we come back together, but we're going to have to be patient and willing to be in a new world in a new way. And together, we can learn to walk and discover um, beauty and wonder and amazement. The new world that's coming, I think, is, is full of good because God is there already before us. What's gotten us through the past is Christ. That's what will get us through the future.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Bless the gifts for the good of this world and your mission, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Let's pray together. O Lord our God, we are born again by your Spirit, by your power. We love you, O oh Lord. We are, are created by you. We worship you this day. Lord, there's new worlds all about us, new worlds being formed, new stars being born. Our world is being reformed in these days and reformed in ways that we haven't imagined or seen. It takes creativity, it takes patience, we feel frustrated, we feel weary, we feel grief and deep sadness at the tragedies that are taking place in many people's lives. The loss of lives, the loss of jobs, the loss of incomes, the loss of homes, the loss of hope. Lord, we lift up this earth in the midst of times that are radically changing. We ask for your grace and mercy to pour down upon us, to rain upon us from heaven. We lift up to you, Lord, especially those who are vulnerable and are in difficult circumstances at this time. Those who are alone. Care for them, O oh Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those, O oh Lord, who have physical problems, health issues, and cannot get medical help. Comfort them, O oh Lord, give them peace, give them relief, and be their healer, O oh Lord. You can heal. Jesus healed even without arriving to the homes of the people he healed. You are present everywhere, so we look to you, O oh Lord, for those in our congregations who are waiting for health care, and those throughout our earth who are cut off from this provision. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Lord, prayer. Lord, we think of those who have lost loved ones at this time, a time when we can't grieve normally, a time when we don't have the normal comforts and normal ways of coping around us. We lift up to you, Lord, those who have lost loved ones. We ask for your mercy, your comfort, your strength to come this moment, this day, in ways that we cannot control or produce or make happen, but that you can. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up to you, Lord, the nations of this earth and the leaders, health leaders everywhere, government leaders. We ask, O oh Lord, for people who are out working to keep us safe. We ask for wisdom. We ask for your grace and mercy at times when things are tense very, very tense. We ask, O oh Lord, that we will have people who guide us, who love you, who seek you, who are drawn to you, who listen to you. 
O Lord, our Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come to us, to our earth. May your will be done in, in the leaders all around the world. May your people be cared for. May life be restored. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Lord, our prayer. Oh Lord, we lift up those in our congregation who are dear to us, who have, um, for many different reasons, for in joy and in sorrow and people that in, in need of healing and people in, in need of your presence and of your strength. We thank you, O oh Lord, that we can cry out to you and that you are someone who is always there, who will never abandon us, whose love is beyond what we can reach. That you are capable, you are above all things. We come before you this day, O oh Lord, with Teresa, with Ed and Gail, with Barb, with Ruth, Darlene, Vicki, Anna, Joyce, Jane, Terry, Linda, Shirley, Alice, Evie, Amy, Ron, Rick, Marge, Donna, Sharon, Bill, George, Lisa and Dave, Jack, Mary, Tom, Norm, Keith and Naomi, Carol, Arlene, Randy, Crystal and Kathy, Karen. We pray for Maria, for Roxy, for Bonnie. Lord, we ask that you would surround them and care for them. Give them health and strength. Comfort them, O Lord, and may your presence be sensed. Lord, hear now the prayers that we offer silently or aloud. Lord, we lift up Danny to you. Um, he is a young man with fighting cancer who coded this week. We ask for his family that you would surround them, O oh Lord, with your peace and your comfort. Protect them, O oh Lord. For Danny, that your presence would be there to raise him up, give him strength. We lift up others to you at this time. Lord, we lift up people who are living in conditions where they can't isolate, where they can't get away and protect themselves, where they are exposed and can't do anything about it. We think of the large refugee settlements. We think of the poor communities of cities where people are packed together and don't have the means. We think of people who are living in fear and lack of safety. We ask, O oh Lord, for them, for the refugees, your children, all around the world, identified as refugees or not, but those fleeing from harm, mind, spirit, body, we ask, O oh Lord, for your protection and help us, O oh Lord, in this earth to find ways to come together that are safe and good and healthy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our nation as things are tense and people are becoming angry and deeply, deeply hurt. And people are ready to take out their anger against each other. We've heard of violent outbreaks. We ask, O oh Lord, that we would learn to love our enemies, 
that we would learn to care for one another, that we would hear what's behind the anger, that we would hear the fear and the hurt and the pain, that we wouldn't respond rashly, but that we would respond wisely and with compassion and love and wisdom. Not to give in to destruction or foolishness, but to walk together and to be firm and to help each other in times when we are in need and weak. You can't do this alone. We need you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Oh Lord, source of life, we thank you because every day is new and we have signs of new life, of springtime, of new births, of joys coming, of new discoveries, of new encounters. We've been getting to know each other in new ways in our prayers every evening. We have been growing in ways that are amazing, in ways that we don't want to lose. We thank you, O oh Lord, that your blessings are more than we can imagine, more than we can grasp, more than we receive. That the power of resurrection can overcome our decrease despair. That you are with us as the resurrected Lord in our midst, transforming us and our realities. And so we love you, we rest in you, we are transformed and find our hope in you. Our Lord, our Redeemer, our God, our Creator. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah.
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. It means also that he's going to keep the other promises just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. A very happy Mother's Day to everyone. Thank you for being together. Happy with you. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Happy
Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, everyone.